Jerry Johnson is uh, back with us uh, today, and of course he's standing by to give us uh, um, his expert opinion on the newspaper headlines. He is a senior lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Jerry Johnson, good morning to you, and thank you very much for your time. Good morning, Kofi, and good morning to all our viewers all over the world that are hearing our voices and could not see our face. They should understand the reality of what we should is in Nigeria presently where there's no fuel and there's no power. Even if you have the gen, to power the gen, you need fuel. So it's, it's just the way it is. The way it is. Hmm. Johnson, people are, uh, what I, I see, every people are queuing queue on the roads uh, for hours from the previous night and still have to stay for hours the next day just to get fuel. Um, if you want to buy in your jerry can, Last person I sent spent the whole day just to get a keg uh, of petrol. It's uh, something we hope we won't see again in, in the near future. Let's start off uh, with a look at the stories coming from the Nation newspaper, the big one, the NNPCL. Marketers defer or over lingering petrol scarcity. So uh, I think it's a case of whose report will you believe? Um, We'll get details of that as we go on. PDP G5 governors won't bow to intimidation. I thought that they had been expanded to G6 with uh, Umahi, uh, including himself in that group una un unanimously. More from the nation. Can to Nigerians vote your conscience? The paper is saying that the group is saying probably they won't um, wait into telling Nigerians who to vote for. Uh, court sanctions or sustains, rather, injunction stopping Nigeria air takeoff. Uh, African teams in sloppy World Cup start. Adele case, our sack permanent secretaries inaugurated by Oye Tola. And we can see a picture of the uh, All Progressives Congress uh, presidential candidate, uh, Shiwaji Bola Tinubu, there in, on the campaign trail. This time it was in a Boeing state. The headline under that picture, Tinubu, our review policies hindering commerce in the Southeast. All right, so that's... Uh, uh, one there from the nation. Let's go over to the next one. The Punch on Friday. With the following headlines. Election result transmission. Beware of fraud. Opposition warns INEC APC recants. Beware of fraud. Opposition warns INEC APC recants. Electoral Commission under pressure over Beavers PDP. APC has hidden an agenda on 2023 elections. Labour Party alleges i'm concerned about poor telecoms network says adamu all right uh, court stops nigeria air indefinitely adjourns case till october 23 reps worry over fg china 475 million dollar deal uh, one will wonder if the worry is a worry for the good of nigerians or something else that we can't say right now uh, i don't know Economic downturn hits manufacturers, oil service firms. And there's a picture of the finance minister there, um, you know, beside that headline. Northern APC Christian leaders divided over presidential candidates marked as one of possible petrol price incre increase. Uh, we can see a picture of queues and uh, the suffering that uh, people out there having to go to, through in Nigeria uh, to get just uh, a liter or a few liters of petrol um, to sustain their lives. Three days to hand over, Oyetola appoints 30 permanent secretaries. <laughs> secretaries. And I'm sure that explains what the nation said, that uh, Adeleke says he will, he will sack them. Um, kidnappers in army uniform, docked Lagos passengers, pro begins. And talking about that, there was also an incident in Port Harcourt yesterday uh, where kidnappers kidnapped uh, someone. They were in army camouflage and shot three policemen, security details, in a convoy dead on top of the new Rumukoro flyover. Really sad. Impeachment. You're misinformed. Bayas. Uh, law, uh, lawmakers tell Ikiti S.A.N. So, um, we move up from the punch and let's go to leadership on Friday. Leadership has the, the following headlines. APC, a Muslim Muslim ticket. Dogara, Achuba, six others disowned Baba Chair over support for Ubi. All right, and that's a, a member of the party who has taken a different uh, a move. Um, Dogara is one of the Christian northerners in the APC. 
uh, Chuba as well. All right. Um, they're saying he can't speak for the group uh, to make position public soon. We can't force anyone to support our candidate Labour Party. Uh, Tiku Tinubu take campaign to Kwara Eboin. Uh, FG destroys uh, 3,000 seized weapons. PMB Six Regional Corporation on Terrorism, Transborder Crimes. DSS withdraws case against Tukur Mamu. Um, I hope you all remember uh, Tukur Mamu. This is the um, uh, the the publisher of the Desert Herald, the one who has been, you know, interfacing between uh, negotiating on behalf of uh, the kidnapped victims, those who were kidnapped in that uh, Abuja Kunda bound train. Uh, Qatar 2022, after first round of matches, African teams yet to win. Uh, we're satisfied with Dangote's performance in CSR. It's according to the reps, uh, some of the headlines on the front page of the Leadership Friday. And final paper, The Guardian, very quickly, a decline in oil gas output hampers growth amid recession fears. Decline in oil and gas output hampers growth amid recession fears. Um, after the floods, picking bits, pieces of ruined investments, livelihood or livelihoods, big story uh, on pages four and five of the Guardian, I'm sure to make for an interesting read and a very good one by the paper. At the bottom of that front page, you can see in red, it might not be too bold on your screen, but I read it out. PDP, CUPP, others slam Adamu over deployment of BVAS. Uh, some interesting things going down as far as the elections are concerned. Let's quickly go over to our guest, um, Jilly Johnson. And we start with the big one on the front page of uh, the the Guardian. Um, we have a decline in oil and, and gas output in the country. Uh, the paper is saying prevailing economic challenges as reflected in the business environment, rising inflation, uh, which is further compounded by poor oil production in the last three months, uh, have undermined Nigeria's economic economy. As official figures show that gross domestic product grew by 2.25%. Uh, uh, so, uh, Jerry Johnson, uh, some people have always said, especially experts in this field, this is a time Nigeria should be ripping in a lot from oil and gas especially, but we can't. It's a paradox. Well, yeah. <clears throat> well, then when you don't keep your house in order, then you have this kind of situation. We don't even know the amount of crude oil we produce that are lifted, that are produced in Nigeria, and the amount of crude oil that are lifted out of Nigeria. So there's no accurate picture. You have, Nigeria is a monoproduct economy. We rely solely on oil. All of our revenue is from all our foreign exchange earning. Most of foreign exchange earning comes from oil. And you have a situation whereby there's no proper coordination. There's no proper supervision of that industry. The president, with all other offices, is also the minister of petroleum, minister of petroleum resources in Nigeria. At the same time, NNPC operates as as as, as a sovereign entity within the Nigerian state, it cannot be questioned. It doesn't even render its account. So you don't have a full picture of what goes on in that particular in that particular industry. So you have this type of situation whereby we should have cast in on what is going on in Russia and Ukraine war, the opportunity it provided. You recall in 1991, the Gulf, the Gulf, the Gulf crisis, Iran, Kuwait, Iraq, Kuwait crisis. We, we benefited from it. Every time there is a global crisis that led to the increase in price of petroleum product, we have always benefited from it, with the exception of what is really happening now. And then if you also go to back to a lingering issue, which no one has been able to find answers to, with respect to whether we pay subsidy or we don't pay subsidy on our petroleum product, there has never been any definite answer to that effect. So that uh, particular industry, which is the Ministry of Nigerian Economy, is the more you look, the less you see. The more you try to understand, the more confused you are. I'm not even sure anybody in, 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 in government could place a lead on what is really going on in that sector. And once your economy, the centerpiece of your economy is oil and gas, and if that oil and gas, which is the foundation, it's not a stable foundation. It's a destructive foundation. It will have a destructive effect on the entire economy. And that's what we, 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 are, we are witnessing. 
that's all we are witnessing. We are witnessing with respect to every other sector. Like I told you earlier before we came online. Now, let's, let's personalize it. Let's bring it to home. I couldn't join through visual means. Why? Because there's no light. Two, I couldn't power my generator because I couldn't get fuel to power the generator. That's on individual level. Now, if you take it to business level, small skills and medium, small and medium scale entrepreneurs that run their own private businesses that have to power their businesses with, with energy. Where do they get energy for? Energy from TC, from TCN and the distribution companies are not coming in. Then the alternative energy supply, which we have in Nigeria, is to use fuel, which is a major resources that God has provided for us. They can't afford it. They, even if they can afford it, there is no way they can get it. So you could see, you could see the, 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 the turnover, the turnover effect, the spillover effect of, of what oil does to, of what does to, 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 to our economy. So you don't need, you don't need rocket science. And the unfortunate thing is that you will not see any spokesperson or Minister of Petroleum coming out to talk. You will not see somebody from the presidency coming out to explain why this is happening. You will not see any spokesperson from NNPC, whether NNPC, LLPC, or NNPC, PLC, or whatever you want to call them, because we don't even know whether they are government enterprise, a public-private enterprise. That's to tell you the absolute confusion and the chaos we have in the major sector that drives our economy. So if the major driver of your economy is in shambles, the rest are assured that every other aspect of your economy will be in shambles. All right, let's uh, quickly go over to, um, uh, stay with The, the Guardian. Um, that, particular, that particular story on the back page, on the front page rather, Ooh. at the bottom there, uh, talking about the situation between uh, in, in the political parties, particularly the PDP and the CUPP, which is a coalition of political parties, uh, the paper saying PDP, CUPP, others, Islam, Adamu, over deployment of beavers. Uh, just to get some details here. The writers to that, they're saying APC, okay, I'll just leave that. It says, following outrage and condemnation that trailed his comments on the deployment of technology for the 2023 general elections by the Independent National Electoral Commission, uh, national chairman of the APC, Abdullah Damas disclaimed reports that he is opposed to the deployment of bimodal voter accreditation system in INEC results viewing portal RF for next year's poll. You know, so he's having to to explain himself at a news conference in Abuja uh, yesterday. The paper says that he was Adamo said he was only concerned about the challenges of electricity supply and irregular telecommunication signals in remote voting districts of uh, the country. So. Um, the reason this, the, the, what he had earlier said that uh, uh, caused a reaction was on Wednesday, he said he was worried that the country is not ripe, you know, for the usage of electoral technology, He's saying network issues could hamper, you know, the smooth running of the election. And that's what the, the PDP and CPP had to, had to tackle him on. After more than two decades of introducing GSM services in Nigeria. Two, two decades of introducing GSM services in Nigeria and the tremendous growth, network coverage and reach of that particular industry. The national chairman of the party that has ruled this country for the past eight years and a member of the party that ruled this country for, Adamo has been in government for 24 years. People should not be deceived. He was in PDP as governor, in PDP as senator, then in APC as senator, and then now as the chairman of the APC, telling us this. It shouldn't be coming from him. In any case, it's an indictment of the present administration he serves. If all of these things he has outlined, they were not even able to improve on it in the in the, in, the, in the past eight years. But that's enough reason for Nigerians not to vote for the party. Because there he gave this cost card of what the party has failed to do in strengthening democracy, in strengthening the Nigerian society, in providing a base that will lead to economic transformation of the country. Because it's an information-based 
economy. It's a tech-based economy. It's not a commodity-based economy. The global economy is a tech-based economy driven by information technology. And the national chairman of the party, the ruling party, is telling us that. It's an indictment. It's an indictment. In fact, it's a campaign material for, for the opposition. But in Nigeria, do you even have opposition to, to, to talk of it? Because all of them are the same. Like I said, there's no difference between PDP and APC. They are just uh, two sides of a coin. Um, and then Libra is just the edge of the two sides of the coin. So that's just and the distinction it could make between Libra well, and then that's a, PDP and APC. <laughs> That's a excuse me. That's a very interesting um, description there. Uh, not not two sides of the con, but when you said labor is the edge of the two sides of the con, <laughs> it got me laughing. Let's go over to Leadership Friday. Uh, Leadership Friday has one very interesting story on the top uh, right corner. Uh, Adeleke vows to sack Oyetola's last minute permanent secretaries, and uh, the in the outgoing governor three days to the handover. His handover, uh, departure from office, uh, appointed 30 permanent secretaries. 30. I mean... <laughs> and, then, and then after he lost the election, he conducted local government election, which he didn't conduct for three and a half years. You see, once the election has been conducted, and then the transitional period is usually called a lean dog session, during the lame dog session, you are not meant to take critical policy decision out of respect for the incoming administration. It's an ethical, it's not a legal binding vote of everybody. It's an ethical standard. You must, you should uphold. You should uphold. Why would you appoint 30 permanent secretaries when you are leaving? Why did you not appoint them six months ago? Why are you waiting for your exit? Now, you are trying to create an administrative bottleneck for the incoming ad administration. Now, if the incoming administration sat those 30 permanent secretaries, they will accuse him of being political. Whereas, it is the outgoing administration that is setting a landmine, a landmine for the incoming administration. I recall when the, the present administration said they are going to conduct censor and do election in 2023. I laughed and I told people that it's not possible for Buhari's administration to do election in 2023 and to conduct censor in 2023. Here is the window that the censor should be left for the incoming administration to do. Because there are some things that, um, because by the time the report of the censor is coming out, it will be a new administration. Now, this, this new permanent secretary that you have appointed. By the time their confirmation, you have just appointed them. The confirmation for the appointment, by the time it is the incoming governor that will confirm the appointment as 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 as, as permanent secretary. So it's it's clear if someone is taking over plus TV administration, for example, and the present person occupying the office that is living in three days is appointing head of departments, assigning responsibility. Responsibility, new responsibility to new people. They are trying to armstrong him in doing what he's supposed to do. That's that's just the basic illustration that explains it. Look, I support Adeliki. You should not you should you should not only sack them. You should you should fire them. You should just retire them. Let them let them go and be with, uh, 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 and stay and stay and stay with their family. Because any one of them that is that is what is the chief of staff? The chief of staff. Which is an political appointment, who is meant to give directive, who is meant to give, who is meant to give counsel to the governor to advise the governor on, uh, <coughs> on on basic civil service rules, process and procedure. Did not advise him. If Buhari is living now, Buhari is living in May 29. Now on May 26, Buhari appointed permanent secretaries to all ministries. To all federal ministries. What is he telling the incoming administration? They are not giving the incoming administration any opportunity to select his or a team of people that work with them. No, no, no. That's 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 that that does not make does not make any sense. It does not make it was the same thing that was done in Oyo State. 
when Haji Mabdi was about leaving, they conducted local government election, which they never conducted um, for, 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 for eight years, for close to for close to eight years. In Nigeria, there are some states in Nigeria that have not conducted local government election since 1999. After the 1998 local government election, national local government election, that battered the Fourth Republic. There are some states in Nigeria that have not conducted local government election till date. And we are practicing democracy. Hmm. Guy, them all are crazy. <laughs> yeah, famous line. Okay, Jamie Johnson, let's quickly um take this one and then we can we can say goodbye to you. Uh I'm, I'm I will stick with the economic story. Uh, this is on the front page of the of the punch. Um at the top of that front page of the punch newspaper uh the house of representatives or reps worry over fg china for 75 million dollar deal and the paper is saying the house of reps has commenced an investigation into the mou uh, between the federal government of nigeria uh through the ministry of communications and digital economy and the uh, government of china on an optic fiber project worth 475 million dollars um they want to investigate the status of the implementation of phase one of the project, including a forensic audit on relevant uh, transactions uh, to execute the National Information Communication Technology Infrastructure Backbone Projects 1 and 2. So they just want to conduct an audit, um, you know, to know what's happening. And of course, uh, uh, th there was a motion filed, you know, by Benjamin Ben, member of the House, uh, to, you know, calling on the House of Reps to investigate uh, VAT. Uh, China's Huawei Technology Limited is in the mix in here. Um, they seem that they, they say that all is not well with that particular uh, uh, credit facility of about four hundred seventy-five million dollars. You know, credit facility. They're not seeing. Well, what once, once, yeah. once you hear that noise and they make it public, that they draw attention to it. They want the parties to come together and resolve some crisis they've been trying to resolve internally that they couldn't resolve. At the end of the day, you will not see the report. Well, have you ever seen any, any report of any investigation they carried out that they made public mm. with respect to execution of project or non-execution of project? The standard practice over the year is that, you know what, you are meant to do what you are supposed to do, you have not done, so we are going to cry out to the public and we will make it a public outcry you will do the needful that's the standard practice that's why they call the attention Jerry Johnson, the interestingly sorry to interject here uh, the the man who, who moved the motion is saying that the the house is concerned that they've tried to um do their oversight functions over this project uh, but they've been frustrated their efforts have been frustrated to to oversight the progress of of this 475 million dollar project because that's that's the reason because they've been frustrated to do their oversight and that's why they brought it to the public domain and you know what goes on when this issue issue happen you see the one of the fundamental problems we have had with this present democratic experience is the principle of checks and balances and cooperation between the organs of government in ensuring that there is compliance with established rules process and procedure who should play what role and what should be done. We have seen that Nigerians have engaged in, 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 in agreement, in treaty, excluding the National the national Assembly. We've seen a situation whereby we've even gotten loan under this present administration, whether they have right to collect this loan or not, whether the National Assembly have the right to play. You see, the National Assembly should know if Nigeria is en engaging in any kind of dealings, economic, political, or what have you, with foreign countries, the National Assembly is empowered by the Constitution to be in the know of these things. However, there are things that are still operated. And the unfortunate experience we have in Nigeria is very simple. When we transited from um, civilian, from military administration to civilian administration, because I'm not calling this democracy, it's what we still have is civilian administration. It's not the democracy. All the principles and tenets of democratic principles are still not upheld. Now, unfortunately for us, it was a former head of state, military head of state, that was the first person that pioneered this transition in the person of Olusha Gumabasanjo. So, the military tendency, not 
disregarding the National Assembly. You know, when military are in power, there are only two organs of government that function. One, the executive and the judiciary. The power of the, of the legislature is subsumed under the executive. And it is that same mindset that Obasanjo used to rule. That's why you have a cantacorous relationship between the National Assembly and Obasanjo administration. Because when the National Assembly is trying to uphold its own value, its own principle, its own power, it is antithetical to Obasanjo's experience as a former military head of state. And it was the same thing under Buhari when um, Bukola Saraki was the Senate president. It was the same challenge we had. Because when we move from one party to another party, in this present democratic experience, it was not also the new democratic experiment. It was also another transition from a civilian administration to another civilian administration. Because the person that was a beneficiary was a former military head of state that did not use legislature. So he does not believe in legislature. So everybody in his cabinet, look at the arrogance of the ministers across board. Is it the minister of 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 uh, uh, minister of labor and productivity you want to talk about or is it the custom boss that said he cannot appear before the national assembly that he cannot wear the uniform of custom or is it the minister of education or is it the minister of digital economy or is it the minister of just look at the disposition of the various ministers towards the national assembly i'm sure, I'm sure. They are open display of this day. So that's that's the challenge we have. All right. Okay. And the National Assembly members themselves don't help themselves because they always dip their hand in the cookie jar. So mm. they go for the crumbs instead of doing the oversight function. So when the crumbs are not coming, they cry with their empty bowl to the public domain, crying so that uh, they can drop some coins into those bowls if they bring it to the public, to tell the public, we are working, you know, these people are stopping us from working, and then they will call them to a meeting, and they will backslap each other, what's wrong with you, these are your coins, and they take their coins, their tail in between their legs, they go back to their, to their default. Mode. So you're saying th this noise is all because <laughs> they have not been allowed to do their oversight, but you think that oversight is, where yeah, is my exactly. share, then, my share of you know and, and, then, and then you do when you do oversight, there must be something insight. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, interesting. You know, so there's some fire. Where the, where the smoke is coming from, there's some fire there. <laughs> exactly, <All right>. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting. They said they've been frustrated from exercising oversight over this exactly, project. I mean, it's exactly. a four hundred and seventy five million million dollar project, you know. Even, <laughs> even with this uh, 206 billion naira that uh, we can't, uh, the Minister of um, uh, uh, Humanitarian Affairs cannot explain. And she says that she would call the Minister of Finance for her to come and explain where that 206 billion naira came from into the, uh, the budget of the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs of 2023. You have sure seen, the reason they are shouting too, I don't seen, know what you say you about seen, that. Because they've been shouting about it in the National Assembly. You know. I, yeah, you have seen, you have seen that. You remember uh, the Minister of Health, that woman, uh, Professor Grinch, how she was subsumed under this type of uh, arrangement of money, budget, budgetary allocation or non-budgetary allocation. You can imagine how that amount of money was inserted and then nothing was done. You, the only noise we will hear about this thing is now. Once they explain, and then they can get their kukuja, it's business as usual. <laughs> I can assure you. So, I'll uh, end with this. Well, let's see. Let's see what happens. It's business. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry. It's business as usual, Kofi. Mm. Once, once, once they, they made noise about it that they inserted this money. Now, when those ones come, they'll just come and appear before the media and say that oh, they will explain. The, it was it was it was it was covered in the initial presentation. It was just that the footnote that they've not explained an hour and then they said oh uh, it was it was it was really it was really covered and then with the all smile they black slap each other and then nothing that's it that's the last you hear from it you see i went with this you see the way the newspaper 
reported DSS withdrawal of the case against Mamu compared to how it was reported when he was abducted in, from Egypt. Mm, mm. And look at the newspaper that they gave the story to, to break the story. If you understand what our Patricia A.T. was removed as a speaker of the House of Red and the, the media organization that broke the news with respect to um, money being spent or not spent on the renovation of the speaker's residence. You understand the dynamics of the Nigerian states and then you understand the dynamics of, of the Nigerian nation and the various factors that guide our decision making and the application of our of, of our judicial system and the applications of our rules in this country okay so so let, let's let's uh, in that vein go to uh, the leadership on friday to have your thoughts on that uh, uh, move by the department of state services or state securities um you know withdrawing the court case against Mamur, who was uh, you know unceremoniously you know arrested uh, in Egypt, repatriated to Nigeria, and um, you know, taken into custody. Mainly, he got to the airport uh, in Abuja. Yeah, that's. They, they, you, you see, if you use a dramatic approach and a sensational approach to arrest a man, and it was flashed across all the pages of the newspaper, across all media platforms. You should use that same as my task to tell us how you have gone about your investigation and why you are withdrawing the case. Now, you have stigmatized Mamu in the first instance with that approach. Now, you are withdrawing the case quietly and gently without... You, if, if, if you don't pay attention to details, you won't see that story, Kofi. Will, you, will anyone see the story? <laughs> no one will see that story. My, my, my case in with, with, with us in Nigeria is for us to, 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 to not to engage in media trial. Media trial is, is a perceptual war. It's, it destroys people's lives because at the end of the day, if there is no real trial, if there is no conviction, that, that, that image is already created for that person. And it leaves with that person forever and ever. You see, we don't have to, 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 to sensationalize. I don't know why um, our security agencies, whether EFCC involved in economic and financial crime, or DSS, or other security, why they engage in sensationalism in, in executing their mandate. That's, that's my own. You, you see, the American, the FBI will not engage in media trial with you. They will gather all their facts. They will invest time and resources on investigation. And before they come to the media, they must have gotten enough evidence that once they place the evidence before you, you see that you do you want to take a plea bargain or you want to, us to go on trial? By the time you see the evidence before you, 99.9% .9 of the time, you, 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 you are nailed. So most people will go for a plea bargain. But our own, the first thing is that it's for anybody to run to the media. And then once we run to the media, we sensationalize the issue. And then when, uh, in the process of sensationalizing the issue, you are criminalize the person perceptually. As far as everybody is concerned, I'll say it in my local dialect, the ear that had the going must hear about the coming. Now, it is not everybody that knew about how Mamu was arrested that would know about DSS withdrawing the case against Mamu. And what, and how do you think people relate with Mamu in the first instance? If you don't have a case against a person, why do you have to go to the extent of 
using state resources of going as far as Egypt, arrest the person, sensationalize the story, in the process criminalize the person perceptually and without taking the matter to court. That's, that's my take. And that's the reason why I still said we are still in a civilian administration and not a democratic society. In democracy, fair hearing, All right. fundamental human rights are the basic tenets of democratic society. Thank All right, Jimmy Johnson. Uh, we'll, we'll take a few more, a uh, couple of uh, a couple of um, headlines before we say goodbye to you. Uh, I'm sure you've been following what's been happening in Nikiti State. The, the Punch has a story on the latest from the impeachment of uh, the House of Assembly Speaker who was in office for just six days uh, and actually sat on that chair uh, for only one day. One day he never got to sit on it again. Um, the, the, the man has gone to court. Um, the governor of Akiri State has said he doesn't have a hand in it. But the name that keeps popping up is uh, the name of the former governor, fire me. But the Akiri State House Assembly uh, on Thursday uh, disagreed, um, I don't know if it's all of them, with the position of some senior lawyers in the state uh, that the speaker elected on Monday, uh, Mrs. Olubumi Adelugba, should vacate the office for Boyega Aribi Shogun, the one who was removed after six days, who emerged speaker six days earlier. Now, the lawmakers said the opinion of the senior advocates is biased, uh, and they they said some things that I won't go into right now. But what, what are your thoughts on, on what's in play now? My my view is that there's no difference between Fauci and them and Fire I mean, After all, both of them are far far. So they're not far from each other. One is just more culture than the other. Um, with respect to you know, if you know what goes on under the scene, and that's a responsibility, that's our responsibility as journalists to let people know, to provide them insight on what on the undercurrent of what goes on in the society. There is no way the governor can say I knew next to nothing about it. One, the governor himself was 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 selected by 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 Fiamme. He was he was the anointed candidate of of, of Fiamme. And then I don't know the role of the Nigerian police in sealing the, the state house of assembly. As far as I'm concerned, from the facts of the case that I've gathered, the present speaker that was elected, the lady, is just wasting our time because it's just a matter of time. The court will rule over that matter. Because if you want to remove, I don't know why they are always in a hurry. If you want to remove the speaker, there are laid down procedures, there are processes that you must put in place to remove a speaker. Those processes were not followed. Now, you, you, they could have come to the house, make your sitting and remove him, give him the 72 hours notice, follow the laid down principle, process and procedure, and then you remove the speaker. However, because um, 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 they want to do it in a hurry and Time is of essence for them, so they went about doing it illegally. You can remove the speaker, there's no doubt about that. But it's the legality of the remover that is in question. So if you don't follow the legal procedure in removing him, what you have done is a nullity. It's ultra virus and of no effect. The court will rule on that. So if the speaker, the people in the group of the present speaker are saying that um, uh, what the sons are saying have been biased. No problem. The court will rule over that matter. We have seen situations whereby governors have been impeached and they have been restored because lay down process and procedures were not followed. They were not followed. And it seems our political class, they don't learn. The governor says, I knew next to nothing about it. Then the police seals the House of Assembly. How would you, as the governor of the state, claim not to know next to nothing about it? Where, in actual sense, the state House of Assembly are just a unit under the office of the governor across the state in Nigeria. Across the state, it is more. It is easier to hold. It is easier to, to remove a speaker in Nigerian state as of assembly than to even hold a commissioner accountable. <laughs> a commissioner, an appointee that mm. was cleared by this. It is. It is easier, and that's why you see speakers are removed left, right, and center. You see the manner with which they impeach. The governor, the deputy governor of uh, the deputy governor of Zamfara State, uh, and that's why some of us have argued 
that we are not a democracy yet. We are still a civil administration. These people are parading themselves to be Democrats. But they are not Democrats. They are just people in Agbada. They are civilians. They, are, they, are, they, have, they have military tendencies and autocratic tendencies. And all they do is to wear civilian outfit and not have military uniform. You see? And fella Nicola Kuti has sang a song that they are in different disguise. They wear suit, they wear abada, they wear everything to deceive people. These people are not democrat. They don't believe in a democratic principle. How cannot the governor call the warning parties together? How cannot I would fire me as the leader of the party until recently? Don't call the warring factions. The people fighting are members of the APC. Why can't they not call them together and have a meeting with them and tell them, guys, let's do it this way. However, they sat behind the scene and they are pulling the strings. You know, my people say in my local that something that is dancing on top of the water, the leaf that is dancing on top of the water, eh? there is the drama is under, uh, that is standing on top of the river. The drama is below, is, is sitting at the river bank. How, how do you say that in, in Yoruba? That's it. Uh, so we know the people pulling the strings we know the people this dance you are seeing this masquerade dance you are seeing we know the godfathers that are pulling the strings and that's what is happening mm -hmm. and they think they think that they are deceiving nigerians they are deceiving themselves that's why i said what is the difference between what fire me is doing now and what fire she has done before in it and it's unfortunate for a kitty people to be going through this harrowing experience we used to think that the kitty people are learned people they are caught and that their level of education will bring some measure of decency in their political approach but look at what has characterized a kitty politics the kitty just look at what has characterized a kitty politics an average kitty man should be ashamed of himself that's the reality the reality, they have not been fortunate to have good political leaders. And I'm going to say this. It's my opinion. Anybody can question, can question, can disagree with it, with his own opinion. But that's my opinion. Just take a look, take a panoramic look at the, the political landscape. By I, I have a lot to do with Ekiti. My wife is from Ekiti. My friends are from Ekiti. If I don't tell anybody that, if I tell I can claim to have come from Ekiti. But it is unfortunate. The way the dimension that a kitty politics has taken, and it has affected the growth of that state. Hmm. All right, it, it's 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 unfortunate. I mean, some of the, li the, li the legal minds that um, the House of Assembly is said to be disagreeing with, because I mean, we don't know whether all of them are, all the members are of the same opinion. Afeb Are Afeb Balala S E N Chief Wale Olani Pekun S E N. Delia Adeshino SAN, Oludara Mola SAN, Femi Falano SAN. Look at the luminaries. Look at the luminaries coming, coming, from, coming from that state. Dayo Akin Laja There's no way. There's Dayo no way. Dayo you, Dayo talk, you, talk about, you talk about that state and the legal profession in Nigeria and you push it aside. Or is it education? There's no, there's no area of life. There's no field of discipline. And unfortunately, they have not gotten it right when it comes to leadership of the state. Like I told you, the same experience they are having now, they had on the foreign tree. It's unfortunate. It's, it's, it's really unfortunate that the Kitty people have always left the state in the hands of charlatans for them to manage. To manage but but, 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 but fire me, you're referring to is was a pro-democracy, you know, fighter, if you want to call our civil society a person. Most of those people that call them pro democracy people in the process of fighting uh, anti democratic element they've also be, they've imbibed them some anti democratic principle so can i ask you who was the deputy do you, do 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 we see any visibility for the deputy of IM? who was the deputy of IM? Hmm. when he was governor does the person have any visibility baba Look, not be to speak grammar. Leadership is not about speaking grammar or speaking phonetics. Leadership is about building people. Leadership is about delegation. This leadership is about teamwork. 
leadership is about working in the overall interest of, 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 of the community, of the state, and of the nation at large. And I am passionate about Ekiti. All you just need to do is to take a trip around the Kitty and see whether they have anything to show for all the democratic um, experiment we have had since 1999 today. Take a trip. Just take a trip around the Kitty. It's unfortunate. That's the reality. And they will, they will just use the media platform to project their personal image. But the, the reality on ground does not reflect the the, the perceptual image they've created for themselves. So it's unfortunate. Oh, the circumstances that people will resort yeah. to anti-democratic principles, they will resort to big grand. What is the role of the police in saving? I, I want everybody but, but Julia to Johnson, they, they said they, they were the trying to forestall... The yeah, Julia Johnson, they, they said they were trying to forestall a breakdown of, of law and order. Um, they to stop certain persons from going there to set the house, the on, house of assembly ablaze, ablaze, invited, on fire, on if, fire. If the police are not invited by the speaker, we should respect the sanctity of this assembly. It's, 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 it's a ground norm of democracy. There are some ground norms. If they are not invited, they can protect the perimeter and not the state house of assembly. And not stop members of the state of assembly of assessing their offices. These are some of the things we need to talk about and we need to input in our constitution. There are some ground norms. Anytime they want to foment this thing, you see uh, armed police. We saw that with. So, Chile Johnson, is the police not entitled to protect public facilities if they have a security report? They said they wanted to stop some persons, unknown persons, from, from setting the place on the, fire, the, on setting the, the place ablaze. The, the 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 state house of assembly look let me go to united states of america the president of united states of america does not have access to congress cannot do anything within the perimeter of the congress he has to seek the permission of the speaker who controls the security apparatus around the congress there are some sanctity there are some ground law we must establish. Can the police secure the, the, the state house? Or can the police stop the chief justice of, of, of chief judge of a state from assessing the courts? Or a magistrate from assessing a court? I have told you that the institution that suffered most when there is military intervention in politics is the legislature. It is the the institution that is destroyed by the military when they come to power. And unfortunately for us, when we started this democratic experience, we started with someone that has a military antecedent. And when we transited to another administration, from one party to another, it was a person that has a military antecedent. So we have seen systematically suppression and destruction of the legislature as an institution. Because as far as they are concerned, they don't even want that institution to exist. The governors don't want the legislature to exist. That's the reality. So we must establish some ground norms. If it is in the constitution that is, it is only the speaker that can invite the police to come to the state house of assembly, this, this recurrent incessant impeachment of speakers across status of assembly in Nigeria will stop. Okay. You have seen governors that have called speakers to the offices and said, you know what? I'm warning you. I'm warning you. I'm warning you. If you are not careful, they will impeach you. Are the, are the, are the speakers the stooge of the governors? They are meant to hold them accountable. All right. You, you know, Johnson, I think we, 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 have, we have to go. go. We have to go. But this probably shows you when, when, when there is a breakdown of law and order in the state and the state governor will come up and say, oh, I don't control the police. Uh, it's, it's, it's a federal government. It's from Abuja. Mm. There's nothing I can do. We'll start crying. But when it comes to things that, you know, if, of, of matters of political experience and political interest, you see the power of the governor to influence uh, the move of the police and the actions of the police. And then you begin to ask yourself, so who is deceiving yeah. who? Who is deceiving who?
Uh, uh, Jimmy Johnson, thank you very much for your time. Yeah. I think yeah. um, uh, you, you, might, you might switch professions to become one of those SA, <laughs> SANs because you've uh, done justice to, to this. And even what you said about it being a nullity is the same word the senior advocates of Nigeria used regarding that impeachment. Quite bizarre, um, you would say. Thank you very much for your time. We have to go now. We appreciate you. COVID is always, is always a nice time hanging out with you on Friday morning. It's set, Thank you. It's set tone for the weekend. Absolutely. Thank you, my brother. Absolutely. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy your weekend. If you have any and I send my greetings to, yes, I will, to, to Mercy. Mercy. If you have any O1 bear, please reach out to me so I can also come <laughs> and uh, enjoy uh, the weekend you can come. with you. I'm a chairman of a wedding reception in Badagri tomorrow. Oh, wow. I will hook up with you then. I will hook up with you then. All right. Thank you, Julie Johnson. Uh, he is uh, a senior lecturer at the uh, Nigerian City of Journalism. Uh, I'll go for that old one bear. I'll ditch this suit for some Agwada and go and have a dance. <laughs> we'll return after the break. We'll have discussions and more discussions on the program. Please stay with us.